Welcome to part one of making this 3D portrait of Firestock. In this portion, I'm going to be building the wool base and also making the eyes. So I'm using these glass cabochons and a paint marker. And I would really recommend testing out what size pupil you want by using just a Sharpie on some paper and laying these cabochons on top. They have a magnifying property, so the way it will look is bigger than what you paint. I used a metallic gold acrylic paint and some green paint. I mixed those together. The metallic will give a shimmer to the eyes, which has a really neat look. I also tested out this lighter color green, um, but I think you wouldn't have to use the lighter colored green. It's up to you. I just kind of speckled it on there. If you can see, you can still see the pupil through that. I didn't make it super opaque. And then I used just the darker green color to cover the entire back of the eye. So it just kind of gives it a shiny look because of the metallic gold that's mixed in with the green. But overall, the eye will still look green. Next I'm building the wool base and I just took a long strip of wool roving and have started felting it. I'm using the felting pen. All of this I have links to in the description and in my other videos I go into more detail of just if you don't understand how I got this shape started. It's the same process I use in all of my other videos, just wrapping the wool as tightly as you can more air that you get out of the wool at the start, the faster you're going to be able to get something dense. And that's really critical, especially for this type of wool portrait, that the base be very, very dense. You want this to become super solid wool. The reason that that's so important is because we're going to be inserting the wool roving as fur on this cat, and it needs to really be held tight inside the cat's head. So I will spend a lot of time really making this very, very heavy with wool, very dense, so that the fibers will stick in there. In fact, I'll end up having to redo the fibers for his his head several times, and it's I can attest that it's very hard to pull out the roving out of his head once it's attached. Here I'm just measuring to make sure that this is going to still fit inside of the shadow box that I have, which is a 5x7 shadow box. The interior is about um, four and a half inches, so this will just fit just inside. And I'm just um, really making a flat level spot where the two eyes will be so that I can glue the eyes on as soon as they're dry. So I'm making larger area than I need to be just really flat and um, ready to have the eyes put on. So now I'm gonna go ahead and glue the eyes in place I'm just going to put a drop of the tacky glue on the back side of the eye and press it very firmly onto the wool. Make sure that the pupil is in the right orientation and then just really press firmly. There's going to be a fair amount of wool that is built up around these glass cabochons. That's also going to help hold this in place and make sure it's very secure. I'm just getting it really lined up and then Press these on. I want to leave a space in between the two eyes that is just a little bit wider than the width of one eye. So you can kind of imagine you could fit maybe a cabochon and a half in between the two eyes. And now I'm going to start working on building up the eyelids. So I've just taken a piece of the core wool and I'm kind of making it into a little flat um, piece that's semi-felted. It's not all the way felted, but just getting this 
started so that it's kind of holding its shape. And I'll make a couple of those. And I'm going to attach them in the set, very center of the face. But where I'm attaching that, you'll see it's at an angle. It's going to be the inner corner of the eye. So it's not halfway. And that the outer attachment is the outer corner. So you can see it's at an angle. And I'm going to do the same thing on this. Again, the inner corner is low on the cat's eye. And then the outer corner is high. And I'm just going to get these attached loosely for right now. I'm going to spend a lot of time continuing to build up the structure of the face. and These will be really securely felted in. I'm going to make the two lower lids as well. And these are actually going to be, um, well for now I'm making it, it's just the same as how I made the upper lids. But these are going to end up being really, really wide open. The lower lid, um, it doesn't cover much of the eye, but for now I'm just going to have it start um, where the upper lid ended at. This will also meet up there and meet up where it meets um, on the outer side of the eye as well. So you can kind of imagine that these eyelids are closed right now. And then I will needle felt them in position of how I want to give the eyes um, a look how wide open they are. And you can you can do that however you want. You could have it look really sleepy and not open the lids very much. Or you could open them really wide, like if you wanted your cat to look like it was looking very intently at something, very surprised, or uh, stalking something, anything like that. There's a lot of freedom in how you want to do this. But for now what I'm doing is basically creating closed eyes. So the the inner portion towards the nose is low and the outer portion on the sides of the face is high. I'm starting to uh, create another little partially felted bundle of wool that's going to be added to the brow. Kind of build up the, the forehead of the cat. And again, you're really going to want to make sure that this gets really, really tightly felted. add some more wool across the forehead. Um, this one I did not start to build up. It's sort of a more fluffy layer and it's more just to smooth out those other layers that I had built up so that you don't see the lines so much. Just rolling up a piece of wool and I'm going to attach it in between the eyes to start forming the bridge of the nose. I'll secure it um, at the top of the forehead and then go all the way down to where the nose would be and I'll fold this wool back up on itself just to make it extra thick and start really um, establishing where the nose and the, the bridge of the nose will be. Now I'm going to start opening up the eyes. So the very first thing I'm doing is working just on that inner corner of the eye. I'm sort of um, creating a more dense area of and the and the correct angles so that the nose comes off where the tear duct meets. 
So just kind of working on that area where the tear duct comes along the bridge of the nose so that I can have a good reference point for the way I want the shape of the eye to be. So I'm just kind of marking that out so I can see where I plan to, to make that angle. And now I'm marking right um, just on the inside of the pupil. Uh, that's going to be the high point of the eye. So again, it comes up at an angle from the tear duct, the inner portion of the eye, and there is where it's going to reach its peak, just on the inside of the pupil. And I'll pull the rest of the eyelid up to sort of match that high point all the way out to the corner of the eye. And when I turn it like this, it's not to show you the back, it's that I'm looking at the profile and just making sure everything on the profile is is how I want it to be. So I'm just making sure that this eye is, is how I want it, which I want it just um, just a kind of above or just right touching the top of the pupil to be the highest portion of the lid so that it's not super wide open. I'm really just working right now on that, that one high point um, right on the inside of the pupil sure that I have the slant that I want. I do want it to have sort of a slant so that it gets that angular eye shape. Looking at the profile, deciding I want to push down this ridge. In the next portion of this tutorial, we're going to really work on the shape of the face. But right now, um, I'm just kind of making this bridge of the nose flatter and tighter. So now you can kind of see the overall shape of that eye. And I had, uh, when my hand was blocking, I had pushed down the lower lid as well. And it just kind of, the lower lid curves along the round shape of the cabochon. So it, it doesn't cover very much of the cabochon at all. It just sort of gives it some volume so that there's cheekbone beneath the eye. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other eye. Again, I'm just going to start at the corner of the eye. And here I'm working on the lower lid. Starting to open that up. Kind of pushing down on that cheekbone and the lower lid. And I just keep working on that until it matches the eye on the other side. And just getting the rest of this all kind of making sure it's dense and ready to move on to building up the shape of the face, which will be part two of this tutorial.